Hi there. I'm Miss Sherry, um, or Nurse Murray. Some of you know me as Nurse Murray. And today our lesson continues our time together in having adventures with God. The most amazing part of being a child of God is getting to know God better. The creator of the universe wants to know you and be in a relationship with you. And over time, we get to know him better and better and see how he's working in the world. And we join in with him at that. Our experiencing God's lessons are meant to help us learn how to live lives full of adventures with God every day. I want to share a few things with you, and then we're going to have a Bible story together. Experiencing God is what we're doing. That's what we're learning about, isn't it? A Bible truth, something that is just true throughout the Bible from the beginning of Genesis to the very end of Revelation. This is something that is repeated over and over and over. God is always at work around me. God doesn't stop. He doesn't sleep. He didn't just work um, in the Old Testament and then quit in the New Testament. He didn't quit when Jesus died. He didn't quit when Jesus was raised from the dead and went back up to heaven. God is always at work around me. You need to know that and believe that because it is true. Part of the reason we know it is true is because Jesus said it. Jesus said in our memory verse, John chapter 5, verse 17, let's say this together. My father is always at his work to this very day, and I too am working. That was Jesus, and he was saying that God is always at work, even right now, and that he is joining him in his work. And I hope that you and I can say someday that we are always working with God too. We are joining him in his work. That's the whole purpose of this study that we're doing, to learn how to join God in his work. What I want you to know by the end of this lesson is that is this right here. I can ask God to show me where he is at work around me and how I can be involved in what he is doing. You do that through prayer. Ask God to show you where he is working and how you can be involved in what he is doing. That should become a daily part, a part of your daily prayers. You ask God to help people who are sick. You ask God to help you with problems. You ask God to forgive your sins. Ask God to show you where he's at work today, right now, in your community, in your school, in your family, in your home. And how can you be a part of that work? So I'm going to tell you a Bible story. I hope that you have your Bible with you. If you don't, pause this video and run, go get your Bible, and let's look this up together. Our story today comes from 2 Kings chapter 6, and 2 Kings is in the Old Testament. You know how to get there. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings. So 1st and 2nd Kings tells us about the time of of Israel, the history of Israel, when the people were living under the kings, you know, their first king was King Saul. And then we've learned about a lot of their other kings. This is during the time I think of King Joram. And um, our story begins in verse eight, verses eight through 23. And in my Bible gives us a little title called Elisha Traps Blinded Arameans. What in the world? Let's see what that means. I got to have a sip of water. And I'm going to show you some characters while I read this so you don't have to be looking at my face while I read to you. How about that? The king of Aram was at war with the nation of Israel. After talking with his officers, the king decided on a place to set up his camp. Elisha sent word to the king of Israel the king of Aram is setting up his camp at this location. Elisha warned the king to beware of not only this location, but other places along the way where the king of Aram had placed his camp. That way, the Israelite army was able to avoid being attacked by Aram's army. Well, this made the king of Aram extremely angry. He gathered his officers together and demanded to know who was the spy in his army. The king believed someone was telling the king of Israel about his plans. One of his officers said, none of us are telling the king of Israel about your plans. The prophet Elisha, 
who lives in Israel is telling the king everything you say. And wait a minute, how would Elisha, the prophet, know what the king of Aram was doing? Well, a prophet is someone who gets messages from God. God spoke directly to the prophets in the Old Testament and told them things, and then they were to give those messages for different to different people. God was giving him. God was the spy that was telling where the Aram army was going, and he was telling Elisha, who told the king of Israel so that he could move his army and keep them safe. The king of Aram was so mad. He said, go find Elisha. I will send my army to capture him. Someone reported to the king of Aram, Elisha is in the city of Dothan. The king of Aram sent horses and chariots and a huge army to the city of Dothan. They traveled at night and during the night they surrounded the hills around the city. Early the next morning, Elisha's young servant boy went outside to do his chores. And when he looked up to the hills, he saw the Aramean army, the enemy army surrounding the city. And he was terrified. He ran to Elisha and asked, what should we do? Elisha told his servant, don't be afraid. We have more people on our side than the king of Aram has on his. Those who are with us, Chapter, uh, I mean, verse 16 says, those who are with us are more than those who are with them. The boy thought, I don't know about that. All I see is the enemy army and they're big. Elisha prayed, God, open his eyes so that he can see. And suddenly the boy looked up at the hills, the same hills that he had just been looking at. And in addition to the Aramean army, It was a huge army of angels and horses and chariots of fire. God had sent an entire army, a bigger army, to protect Elisha and the servant from the Aramean army. So before the Aramean army made its way to Elisha, Elisha prayed to God and said, God caused these men to become to become blind. God did just as Elisha asked, causing the king's army to become blind. Elisha said to the army, he kind of tricked them. He said, this is not the place you're looking for. Come on, I'll take you to the place you want to go. And he led them directly to the city of Samaria, where the king of Israel was waiting for them. Upon seeing the, that they were in Samaria, the, at, Elisha prayed and said, God, please give these men their sight back. So they opened their eyes and they saw that they were in the presence of the king of Israel. Imagine they were pretty afraid. The king of Israel asked Elisha, should I kill them? And Elisha said, you didn't capture them yourself. You don't need to kill them. Feed them a good feast and send them home. So the king did just that. He prepared a giant feast, a really nice meal, a banquet for these soldiers, fed them, and then said, you're free to go. Go home. You're safe. I'm not going to kill you. I'm not going to keep you in prison. Wow. That was really different. When they got home, all safe and sound, the king of Aram said, because of this kindness, I'm going to end this war with Israel. We don't even need to be enemies. Isn't that amazing? God worked through all these different people, and he showed them how he was working, and they just joined in with him. The little boy didn't have to defeat the whole army. He just watched and saw what God was doing. Elisha prayed to God and he answered his prayers. The king of Israel did the right thing by not killing the soldiers. He fed them. And the king of Aram saw kindness and decided that he was going to forgive, forget the war and just quit all of that. Is God always at work around us? Yes, he is. It's just... We don't always see it. Sometimes we're frightened like the little boy and we just see the scary things and we see the bad things, but God is always at work around us. We know that. 
How do we always see, how can we see what he's doing? How can we be involved in the work that God's doing? Well, we can read our Bible and read these kinds of stories and let them remind us that God is mighty and strong and he protects his people. We can read the New Testament and see how Jesus lived his life pure and kind and good and that he prayed. And we can follow him and do things that he did. That will help us to be part of God's work. We can pray and ask God to help us to be a part of his work and to show us where he's working. We can be willing for God to use us, be open to God and not just trying to do our own thing, but be willing to do God's work. We can ask God, show me where you're working. I don't even see it, God, right now. I just see, I see a lot of pain. I see a lot of suffering. Are you even here? And he'll show you where he is if you'll open your eyes. And then we just live in ways that will please and honor God. You know, it might, we might kind of want a miracle with a, um, horses and chariots of fire, but God can work through you and me all the time. Here's some ideas and some ways that God can work through just regular kids. What if I prayed for wisdom and I got a great idea on solving a problem? It's not just a coincidence when we pray for something and then, and then something good happens. Sometimes we want to pray, God, just take this problem away from me. It's not fair. It's terrible. Make it go away. But if we can pray for wisdom and say, God, I can't figure this out, but I can't stand this anymore. Will you please help me? Show me a way out of this bad situation. He will. He'll give you some wisdom to solve this problem. I was upset and I prayed. After praying, I started to feel better. God can change the way we feel in our hearts. If we will pray to him earnestly and ask him and say, I'm scared, I'm scared. He can bring some peace and calm in that time of, of fear. Um, what about, I saw my friend front crying and I felt I should say something nice to her. So I did. A lot of times we hear or we see a situation and we kind of think somebody should do something. Somebody should be nice to them. Somebody should help them. When we hear that voice, somebody might be you. And this kid was crying and, and if you saw him and you felt somebody should say something kind and you did, you were following God. You were working right there with God. One more. A friend asked me if he could come to church with me. Oh, wow. What a blessing. How neat is that? Sometimes we want to ask other people to come to church with us, but we're kind of afraid because they'll think it's weird or it's kind of awkward to ask them. But when a friend says, um, I come, what is this church you go to? Or I'd like to know more about your church a great opportunity. It's an open door. God's just serving it up on a platter and saying here. And then all you have to say is come with me to church next Sunday. It's just like that. God gives us opportunities. When we pray for them, God will give us those opportunities to, to see his work, see what he's doing and to get involved with him in his work. Let's pray together as we end our class. Oh, God, we praise you, God, that you are being a redeeming God. You care and you are always saving people. You don't want anyone to perish. You want everyone to come into your kingdom. Show us how you are working to save the lost and heal our nation right around us. Show us how we can join you in your work. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bye. I'll see you next time. I hope you have some great adventures with God this week.